Hello, I'm journalist Jeff Smith here at Ono Academic College to talk about diversity and multiculturalism among the students here. With me now is Professor Tamar hostovsky brandis In your mind, what makes Ono really a special place to come and learn? What makes this a, a, a really wonderful place to pursue an education? Well, first and foremost, I think the most important thing, the most unique thing, is the composition of our student body. Um, our students really come from all sectors of Israeli society. We have Jewish students, we have Arab students, um, we have ultra-Orthodox students, we have a lot of first-generation higher education students, which I think is a very important contribution, of course, for the students for themselves, but also to the student body um, itself. And I think that in terms of the classroom and the diversity of the classroom, our own academic college is truly unique. What are the challenges and also the opportunities of having such a diverse student body? Well, the challenges are obviously gaps in um, knowledge, prior knowledge, and um, gaps in life experiences, different life experiences, diversities in life experiences, that would be more accurate. But for me, these are first and foremost opportunities and strengths. For me, the classroom, my classroom, is a unique opportunity to talk about these very contentious topics, you know, equality. What does equality mean in a Jewish and democratic state? Um, to talk about international law, you know, to talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in an atmosphere that many of the students don't have the possibility to experience anywhere else. I feel that today, the classroom is more important than ever. If we keep hearing about, you know, the polarizing effect of social networks, then the classroom is really a unique place, a unique space, which is a safe space in which students can engage in a respectful conversation about these very contentious, difficult topics. Why is it important for you to encourage those difficult conversations, those controversial topics in the classroom and not to avoid them? Well, first, it's impossible. You know, it's impossible with the topics. I mean, constitutional law is about equality, and the, it is about freedom of expression and the limits of freedom of expression. Um, you know, it is about the definition of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state and what does this definition mean. Um, and it is, and I think it's very important nowadays, you know, about democracy. What is democracy? What are the, what are the threats to democracy? How do we react to the threats of democracy? This is the material. And I think that we have to remember that the Israeli public education system, the school education system, is separate. Each group studies in its own school, and this is the first opportunity for them to hear other perspectives. Now, this is what Israeli society is. This is what democracy is about. This is, in my perspective, in my perception, this is a microcosmos, you know, of the whole democratic experiment. So yes, you know, there are gaps you need to overcome, but they are nothing compared to the opportunity that this kind of classroom provides. Bring me into your classroom, if you could. I mean, what is that conversation like when you have such a diverse student body with different backgrounds, different religious beliefs, different political beliefs? I think it's surprising how civilized it is. There's something in the personal encounter, you know, in the listening to this personal story or personal life experience of the student that is sitting next to me that has a taming effect. It doesn't necessarily mean that students change their political opinions. And it's not my goal at all, you know, to influence the students' political opinions. But it does mean that if students come in with this very, very, you know, these very strong statements, for example, about Israel being a, a Jewish state and what this implies, you know, in many respects, then once they hear the personal experience you know, life experience of the Arab students that is sitting next to them, it doesn't mean that, mean that they would necessarily change their political opinion, but I do feel that, you know, there's, that, the, that the discussion is tamed down, that it's not as polarizing, you know, as the kind of discussion that takes place in the media, um, in the um, political discourse, in the uh, social networks, or outside of the classroom. In person, I mean, these discussions are heated, certainly passionate, but also respectful. I think a lot of the work we do in class about being able to put our emotions and our feelings aside, or at least not focus exclusively on how we feel about thing, things, 
and try to think about them, you know, to analyze them, to understand the difference between the legal perspective and the political perspective. And in many situations, there is a difference, you know, to be able to kind of take the problem apart and see different facets, different aspects of an issue, not just my perspective, which is, you know, strongly driven by how I feel about things. And I like to think, I believe, that this is important from the stu for the students beyond you know, their knowledge of constitutional law and the case law of the Israeli Supreme Court. These are tools that they also take you know, into other classes, into their lives, into their roles as citizens. You know, it's not just about the classroom. Is there a student's personal journey or success story that you, holds a special place in your heart about what they learned in your classroom, what they learned here at Ono, and how they carried that forward even in, into the future? I have many, many. Um, many stories like that. I think the sentence I've he I hear most um, is, I couldn't imagine you know, the opportunities I had. I had a student, for example, that opened a center that deals with sexual harassment within the ultra-Orthodox community. We've had students from an Ethiopian origin in my equality class, for example. I teach a class about equality, writing seminars about racial profiling. They didn't know that it has a name. So they hadn't, they, they, they had, the, they've lived through the experience of racial profiling by the police. But once, you know, they get into the academic research of racial profiling, then suddenly they can name their experience. And they can say, well, this is happening in other countries as well. You know, I have a comparative perspective of my experience of what is going on. And it's a real issue, and there's writing about it, and there's interest in it, and I can name it, and I can say what's wrong with it, you know, and I can debate. I have the tools to debate, to put in words, to fight, you know, my, my experience. I think that's a very empowering, you know, experience for students, and we hear it a lot. And for six years in a row now, the lecturers here at Ono Academic College have been awarded the title of, of best lecturers in Israel. That's got to be very meaningful to you. Well, first, we're very happy, of course, that this, this is the student experience um, of our hard work and of our teaching. A lot of our students are first-generation higher education students, um, and they make a huge leap here. And it's very important for us that the fact that they make this huge leap doesn't mean that we compromise. We don't compromise with respect to academic excellence. We don't compromise with respect to teaching. We don't compromise with respect to requirements. So our students come out with an LLB and they make this leap here at Ono, which means I think that our contribution you know, to social mobilization within Israeli society is really unparalleled. I don't think there's any other institution that contributes so much in terms of diversity of the student body, in terms of the size of the student body. You know, I think numbers are also relevant if you want to make a difference. You know, the number is also significant with respect to the change we make within society and how many students are able you know, to better their position, to better their lives as a result of studying. Last thing I want to ask, I mean, you're teaching your students. What are your students teaching you? Oh, a lot. Um, so my current research project, which is a huge research project that's been going on for years, I've been working on for years, I've published a few articles in top law reviews and I'm currently working on additional papers, um, is a project on solidarity. My whole perspective on how to foster solidarity, how to encourage solidarity um, in a diverse society, and in a culturally diverse society, in a conflicted society, um, has been very much influenced by the personal experiences you know I hear from my students and um, by their perspective so I and maybe enrich in them with knowledge but their perspectives enrich in me no less you know and they're very much tied into and interwoven into the research work and academic work that I do because it's one student that tells a story of so many more it's from this one example we can extrapolate the experiences of many so tell me this the student's story and her journey. So, for example, I had an ultra-Orthodox uh, student, um, a mother of five children, uh, you know, in her 30s, who came to me to ask for a recommendation for a, sec for a master's. She wanted to apply for a master's. And what she said is, I never imagined I could be at this point. You know, I thought that I was going to be a teacher um, because everyone around me, all my friends, you know, went to be teachers within our community. And as 
I progressed throughout the years, I became more and more interested. And suddenly, you know, she said I could see myself interning in a prestigious, you know, um, law firm. And she did succeed. She went out to intern in one of the most prestigious, you know, law firms in Israel. And while she was there, you know, she started imagining what else she could do. You know, the, the, the scope of her opportunities expanded. And she said, well, I want to apply for a master's. And, you know, she even whispered, I might even want to go for a PhD later. And I said, of course you go for a PhD. You know, you can do it. She said, well, I have kids. It's not too late. And she said, you know, as she decided at some point, you know, that she's going for it, you know, which is something she couldn't have imagined um, years before that. And this is one story, but I've had numerous students describe the same experience. Odo certainly prides itself on being an elite research institution. What does that mean in practice? What kind of research is going on here at Ono Academic College? And do you have any personal examples of the work you're doing? I think it's very important to emphasize that excellence in teaching doesn't come at the expense of excellence in research. So it's very important for us, you know, to be at the front of research, that is the researching academic world. Um, my colleagues publish a lot, I publish a lot, you know, at top law reviews around the world, international law reviews. It's very important for us to be part of the academic conversation that is going on um, within our respective you know, disciplines within our respective areas. So I hope that for our students, you know, it is the beginning of a lifelong journey of, of, of learning, of wanting to know, you know, of asking questions and, and wanting to know more and figuring out the world around them. Um, and I also think, but I also think, of course, that our role is also to provide them with practical tools, you know, tools to integrate into society, tools for social mobilization, our third role is in terms of influencing Israeli society. As we know, Israeli society, you know, is very polarized. Um, I think there are a lot of issues at stakes in terms of public discourse, in terms of democracy, in terms of equality, in terms of freedom of expression. And I think that we do have an educational role here also, you know, in terms of educating citizens. So yes, we educate students, and we give them the tools to be professionals in their respective disciplines. But I also think, at least in the law school, I believe that we also give them the tools to be more involved, more engaging, more caring citizens of Israel.